Hi, and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm Hillsborough Mayor Steve Calloway, and we're recording today from the Hillsborough Civic Center inside the Shirley Huffman Auditorium, and we are surrounded by art. It's on the elevators in the parking garage level and the first floor. It's inside the Civic Center and the sculptures in the lobby. It's even on the patterns in the concrete of the Tom Hughes Civic Center Plaza. And as you walk throughout downtown Hillsboro and the Cultural Arts District, you'll see the infusion of art in public spaces. Like the mural on the outside of Collective Kitchen, it's entitled, Food is Our Common Ground. There's the beautiful stained glass of the Glenn and Viola Walters Cultural Arts Center and the an impressive, stunning mosaic panels outside Sequoia Art Gallery. And most recently and newest of all are the lively and beautiful colorful murals on Calle Diaz along 10th Avenue. There's so many places within our cultural arts district that you will see art that reflects the heritage and the experiences of the individuals who make up our beloved community of Hillsborough. And so I'm happy to welcome and thank you all for joining me today, three people whose vocation and passion are the arts. So we have Bridie Harrington, who's our Cultural Arts District Director for the City of Hillsboro, Razia uh, Raushan with Tualatin Valley Creates, and Salvador Mayoral IV of RAC, the Regional Arts and Culture Council. Thank you all for being here. And as I mentioned, it's, you know, this is more than just, um, you know, a passion, it's your, also your vocation. And so, um, because you're each involved in the arts, how does art speak to you personally? And we'll just start, how about sure. here with Bridie, thanks. Uh, well, the arts, I think for me as an adult, are similar to Hello. Um, they impacted me as a young person, and uh, specifically, I felt uh, that first welcome in theater spaces, and was always very struck by the quality of listening, and openness, and the courage that I saw from artists in those spaces, so getting to work for the city, getting to work with artists who bring all of that commitment and passion and excitement to our quality of life. Um, it's both fulfilling as someone who loves the arts and someone who gets to work in the arts. Very good, thanks. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm really blessed that my parents and my grandparents supported my creative expression and curiosity and brought home art supplies in the home. And I grew into being a professional artist. I'm a professional visual artist. I travel around the country doing murals and chalk art festivals and and my parents were entrepreneurs so I bridged the two between my creative expression and my business mindset to now work as a in a service organization for the arts. That's great, thanks. Yeah. So well, like, uh, like Rosie Ann Brighty said I also was exposed to arts really young. I grew up in a household where there was different kinds of arts happening. Uh, my father playing guitar, my mom cooking in the kitchen, um, but f yeah I just for me, as a writer and musician, which is eventually what I had started to do as I got older, um, leaning on the arts to either work through or process, or even just to make me feel better about whatever I want to feel better about. Um, so I'm understanding the full impact of what the arts can do, which I think has completely informed my vocation. I love that you use that word now yeah. as a culture worker. Um, and now supporting and amplifying other artists to do that very same thing. And, you know, what's fascinating to me is each of you, you know, where you are as adults, you know, that was set in direction, you know, when you were younger, mm -hmm. um, you know, either in the home, you know, th through the support of parents, through the activities of school. And I, I'm excited to think that with the art and the prioritization of art in our city, that someday we'll have artists who sit around and visit, and it's not just we were exposed to it at home, but we were exposed to it and surrounded by it in the city where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And that will be, I think that's when we'll know we have been successful mm -hmm. with it. Um, you know, and, and you know, art does make, you know, Hillsboro and any city, you know, a warm, welcoming place, an inviting place, and, um, you know, and, and I think of where we are today, and, and certainly Valerie Otani, you know, who was Hillsborough's uh, longtime and first public art supervisor uh, who, who passed away not too long ago. And her vision, her art, 
her legacy, you know, which is, um, you know, s seen throughout Hillsboro as well as in our memories. Um, you know, some of it was fun and whimsical. Uh, some of us may remember the, the champion flock of weed eaters, you know, that, that uh, you know, we, we saw and would be placed and replaced around town. Um, and then the one that really uh, we were so well known for, Head Over Heels, the stick art at Orenco Woods Nature Park, uh, which now both of these art uh, pieces and, and projects were temporary in nature. Um, and I think that's also part of what makes art special. Mm -hmm. You experience it and you better go experience it because it may not be around forever. So, um, you know, when I think about Valerie's work, um, you know, how, how does art have that power to bring people and community together, um, like we've seen with Head Over Heels or some of the other things? Yeah, I mean, I believe that art can be transcendent. I believe that art can remove language barriers because when you experience visual art or performing art and, and even literary mm -hmm. art in many cases, you are touching the human soul. And so those opportunities come together, whether you're with a friend or a relative or with a stranger, mm. and to create that memory in that moment, but then to hold on to that for the rest of your life, and then to share it in your, story, your own storytelling. Nice. Yeah. I like that you mentioned, um, also shout out to Valerie Otani, um, but the work that she brought to a rental part, uh, that's a temporary piece of public art. Public art is the realm in which I work a lot in. Mm -hmm. And um, there's something really valuable about having work in the public space because it's accessible. Um, people can engage in it whenever they feel like it. Um, it. They don't have to pay to have an experience with it. Um, I think that, to your question earlier, it brings um, a lot of pride to know that that's in their community. Um, and I think that in itself can unify folks. Um, I'm thinking about that word welcoming, and I know Razi was um, involved in a mural that's coming to the Cultural Arts District, and Carl Leclerc, our public art supervisor, mm -hmm. shared there was a young artist on the panel who said the murals on Kaye Diaz made her feel welcomed, made her feel seen in her own community. Mm -hmm. And then we have festivals and events that we know after um, what's been a very isolating and lonely time for people during COVID, that the arts are a powerful force for gathering and connection and really lifting all of our morale and spirits as a city um, emerging from this COVID time. Nice. So, you know, Razia, you talked about how strangers can be literally standing next to each other, but all of a sudden when you have that shared experience, mm -hmm. you know, you're no longer strangers. And that really does help bring people together. So I understand, you know, the unifying power and the emotion and, and everything else, but sometimes we can get confused by the term cultural arts district, okay? And so help us understand what is a cultural arts district? Sure. Um, well, I think Hillsborough should feel very proud about the fact that we um, that we've had this legacy of investment in the arts. So the cultural arts district is is another chapter in, in decades of investment. Mm -hmm and the power of arts and culture. Uh, Americans for the Arts defines a cultural arts district as, to paraphrase, as an area of a city with a high concentration of cultural and arts assets. And I, I think in Hillsboro, I like to describe it as a constellation of assets. We have all of these bright, beautiful, uh, creative spaces in our city that are homes for connection and for creativity. Um, I'm also always really careful to say that um, the city didn't create the district, right? The district was created by artists and entrepreneurs and people who put forward risk and talent and energy and arts champions, um, which includes our city. So this is really a moment of um, celebration and designating all of that achievement so we can welcome people to um, experience that in our M&M &M marketplace, in our historic mm -hmm. downtown, on Calle Diaz, and, and use the arts as a tool to connect our city. Very nice. You know, um, my first experience with public art in Hillsboro started, you know, almost 30 years ago, 25 years ago, when we were creating the 2020 Vision and Action Plan. And, you know, we asked, you know, thousands of people, what do you want to see Hillsboro have or look like or be like in 2020? And public art was one of the common themes. And so, you know, that's why we're here today, not because you know, the city said it's a good idea or we need it. It's because people said to the city, this is a good idea and we want it. And so, um, you know, what we're doing isn't new. 
we might be doing things in a new way or doing new things, but it's still a continuation, you know, and a broadening of what we started years ago. And some of those things, the, the newer things, include the Bridge of Land and Sky over Highway 26 at Brookwood Parkway. Um, and so as you drive through, it's kind of a gateway now for Hillsboro. And, um, you know, the... the you know, the sculptures, the, the fencing, if you will, the artwork is up. It'll be illuminated, you know, in the weeks to come. Incredibly excited for that to happen. Um, the other one is even as you drive by Gordon Faber Recreational Complex and you'll see the, the spires of the football stadium, you know, lit up different colors depending on the time of year or the animated art, you know, with Ron Tonkin Field with the pitcher and the batter and the ball. And so it's fun, um, you know, to see art you know, even as you're driving around. Um, and so with, you know, and, and those are examples, I guess, of some of the partnerships, but within our cultural arts district, it is heavily dependent on partnerships. We're not, nobody's doing this alone. And, and truly the sum, you know, is, is, uh, is greater than, you know, the, the individual parts. And so how can you, I guess, help us understand the importance of partnerships, you know, to have built and Hillsboro's art up the point that it is and and to arrive at our cultural arts district and there was a question in there somewhere <laughs> so um but salvador do you want to start us off yeah well part of um the reason why i think i'm here today is due to the partnership that um the regional arts and cultural council and the city of hillsborough um, um participated in last year for going public going public is a mural initiative that uh, provides mentorship um, and opportunity, mural opportunity to paint for emerging BIPOC artists. Mm -hmm. And so um, I connected with Bridie and Carl LeClaire and we discussed how can we do that, how can we have Hillsboro artists specifically go through that program and also paint in the city of Hillsboro. Um, and so I think part of why partnerships are really important and successful is that we are collectively supporting the arts and culture landscape. And in this case, as RAC, the Regional Arts and Culture Council, which offers you know, public art opportunities and grants for throughout the Portland metro area, um, it was really important to us to figure out how we might be able to specifically do that here in the city of Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, I think, build up the field of artists that are working in this area to not only be able to apply to different opportunities, whether it's in Portland, whether it's in Hillsboro, but also outside of the region. Um, so. Nice, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it is through the power of partnerships that, that many great things happen. And the partnerships, when you look at how the individuals, whether it's a for-profit, the city, or a nonprofit, are leveraging their assets, their resources, their energy, so that the result of which is better than, again, better than those individual pieces. Mm -hmm. And so things like what Tualatin Valley Creates has been doing with the city of Hillsboro and private developers, one project being the Main Street Commons, which is a new retail restaurant location at the corner of Main and Second. So working as the nonprofit partner in the program, the city helping with funding and helping with other outreach efforts, and then the for-profit developer saying, we're gonna do this project and we want public art to be an essential piece of this effort. And so Tualatin Valley Creates helping to create a steering committee mm -hmm. out of Hillsboroughians, uh, both people who work, own businesses, and live in many of Hillsborough zip codes, and saying that the new art that's gonna be installed is reflective of the people who invest their lives and time here. Nice. I kind of think of it like we're all bringing puzzle pieces together. Mm -hmm. Everyone has different strengths in this work, our artists, our businesses, but then we're bringing all of these rewards back to Hillsboro that we could never have done, any one of us could never have done alone. Nice. Well, you know, our cultural arts district kind of has, um, you know, three, three parts to it. And on the east is Calle Diaz, mm -hmm. and that's our Latino hub of Hillsboro and you know we heard earlier just you know the mural and and just that sense of identity you know that it provided as well as the opportunity for new and emerging artists um, talk to us a little bit more about Calle Diaz sure I think um, something that was really exciting to us about the partnership with RAC for the murals at um, on Calle Diaz was that we not only wanted to invest in the businesses that were the canvas mm -hmm. but we wanted to invest in the careers of artists 
and we wanted to use some of the work that our friends in ECDEV had been doing to listen to the community and say, what is, if, if you're going to dream forward a bit, and they worked with um, actually an artist planning group, an urban planning group, to say, what is the core and what is the heart of Kai Ideas? And some of the themes that came forward from residents and stakeholders were celebration of nature, celebration of culture, mm -hmm. celebration of the fact that this is, a, this is an important area for kids and families, going to the park and the library and the aquatic center. So we got to share all of that with the artists mm -hmm. um, so they could kind of listen with the community in their ear while they were trying to honor all of those goals and bring them to life. Nice. So um, then we move into our historic downtown, mm -hmm. okay? And um, there's just a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, Razier, you mentioned, you know, the second in Maine, mm -hmm. you know, um, and the art that's going in there. You know, share with us some of, some of what's happening, Bridie, and then we'll hear from you a as well, you know, with the Chalk Art Festival and some other things. Sure, it's a really, I, I think you can really feel it when you walk down Main Street or walk down the avenues downtown. I was at our uh, art walk last night, our Hillsborough Art Walk, which is in its 16th year um, and is maybe has the biggest participation we've ever had thanks to local businesses and artists coming together. I saw folks from TVC there last night coming mm -hmm. out to support. Um, but we have, we really have a great climate of folks who have been passionate about the arts for over a decade new businesses coming in to say, how do we join forces? Um, the, the murals that are coming to Second in Maine, um, you know, between, if you look on one side of Maine, you have the Walters Cultural Arts Center, which the city invested in going way back um, and opening in 2004. We've got assets like Shoot Park. We've got where, where there's performances and festivals. Mm -hmm. Now we've got this new energy drawing people all the way down the block, um, and you you really can feel it when you walk down the street how powerful the impact of the arts are. Mm -hmm. Nice. So tell us about all the great things that you're also doing in downtown. Yeah, yeah. So, so for those who don't know us, Tualatin Valley Creates is a service organization. We do a lot of work behind the scenes, and um, we work to drive resilient, creative, inclusive, communities through arts, culture, heritage, and humanities. And so, as mentioned, one of the projects we're working on is with Henry Point Development and Stonefly Development for the Main Street Commons, which is there on the, sec on the corner of 2nd and Main. And you know, the project itself, although the, the panels will be installed outdoors, they're gonna be installed as commercial panels, five foot by 10 foot, 10 foot by 30 foot. And it was an opportunity for us to elevate studio artists artists that are working in multiple media, printmaking, fabric artists, because we're taking their work and we're reproducing it on outdoor commercial products. And then those panels can be recurated every five years. So we now have this outdoor gallery space mm -hmm. that's reflective of, as, as you both have shared, what Hillsboroughians are seeking and what they want to be proud of, and this new placemaking. And so that's one of the big projects we've been working on for many months. And the other is the La Strada de Pastelli Chalk Art Festival. And so this is our annual premiere festival, uh, also showcasing m multiple modalities from the large scale chalk art mm -hmm. being done right down the center of the street in Chalk Pastels, art vendors with multiple visual works, literary works, auditory works, and then a main stage, so two days of performances. Mm -hmm. And we do sprinkle performers throughout the footprint of the event, uh, which goes down the second avenues and third avenues, as well as Main Street, and we call them troubadour musicians. Nice. So what, what made Hillsborough a great fit for La Strada, especially as we came out of the pandemic? You know, it was, in part, it was the way that Hillsborough was already investing in mm -hmm. creativity, the way that Hillsborough had declared a, a cultural arts district, the way that downtown Hillsborough is designed for a number of those amenities, public transit being very accessible, mm -hmm. uh, also having a number of parking spaces. Secretly, it's the staff uh, and our electeds, and so it was, it, it was a perfect location for an event of this scale. The festival does attract about 40,000 people over the two days. And so making sure that we had space for all those attendees to have a, a wonderful experience. And, so, oh, oh, please, sorry. no. Um, it was about a year ago that Rosie said, hey, what if we need a new home? What about Hillsboro being the home of La Strada? And we're so grateful that we had such a big embrace and excitement from the city. At that time, we knew we wanted help 
bringing people back mm -hmm. to downtown, yeah. letting people know downtown was open for business mm -hmm. after COVID. We didn't know we were going to have the fire tragedy in our downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this added an incredible benefit mm -hmm. to truly welcome people back, to support kids, to support families. Um, it's just a huge gift, huge gift. Yeah, and I mean, to, to also say, we don't do this alone. Mm -hmm. TVC does not create this event alone. Uh, we partner with the city. We also partner with all the businesses, not only in the footprint of the event, but also surrounding. And so many of those businesses help uh, with their own sidewalk sales, help with the promotion of the event, help with volunteering for the event, bringing their own artists to the event, people that they know in their network. Yeah. And so it is, it, is, it is really an expression of everybody involved. So it's the, <laughs> excuse me, the third weekend yes. of July, mm -hmm. every summer, every and so you've had five, mm -hmm. and uh, this was the first time most recently in Hillsboro. So uh, what did the artists say, you know, about their first experience in Hillsboro? So we, so as a professional caliber chalk art festival, we do fly in artists from all over the country. Mm -hmm. It's an application process. And then our performers are all local, so regional performers. And many of the artists flying in were so delighted by Hillsborough. They Good. loved the historic district. A few of them went off and traveled and, and, and it went to many of the outside areas and were shopping and spending their evenings in the restaurants. And a number of our, our performers themselves also were familiar with Hillsborough but hadn't been able mm -hmm. to really commit to spend time here. Mm -hmm. And so a number of the artists were so delighted and excited to come back. Nice. Well, and one of the things, you know, having come down every every day, mm -hmm. you you saw the same people, you know, who are coming down to see the progress and watch the progress. So from beginning, you know, in the middle and all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And it was great, to, you know, for people to have a reason to come back again and again and again. And while they were here, they supported the downtown economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a, a truly a win-win all the way around. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right, so we have... Calle, Calle Diaz, mm -hmm. then we have our historic downtown, mm -hmm. and the west side of our cultural arts district is M&M Market. Mm -hmm. So there are some really cool things happening at M&M this last summer, including the El Sol Festival. Yes, we are so fortunate that in addition to support for the murals and La Strada, the city was able to sponsor um, and really just bring to life a great idea that was the complete vision of Jaime Miranda, the owner of M&M Marketplace, who has always had the goal of Eminem being a home for cultural exchange. They actually weren't able to celebrate, have a big uh, you know, celebration of their 20th anniversary because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So this festival was meaningful for so many reasons, but it brought incredible artists to the stage. There was spontaneous dancing. There was interactive programming. My kiddo was getting to learn samba drumming mm -hmm. on stage. It was, it was such a special, heartfelt welcoming event that also supported 60 small businesses who had been through a really rough time. So we really want to welcome people back to um, experience all the great programming that Jaime and his team are putting forward and that is coming back this summer also for its second year. So really good things happening um, in multiple hubs in the district. Yeah, one of the things that makes Eminem so special is that you know it is a regional draw, the Mercado mm -hmm. is, and you realize that culture art doesn't stop at city limits or county limits. Um, and that's one of the things that's exciting about RAC is, you know, as we talk about Multnomah County in Portland or Washington County, Clackamas County, we're now broadening my experiences as a consumer and experiencer of art, but we're also giving additional opportunities then to our emerging artists um, who, as has been mentioned, might not have thought of Hillsboro as a place where they could be hosted, but now they can. And so it's just really exciting to see how, you know, that, that symbiotic relationship where Hillsboro is helping others and mm -hmm. others are helping Hillsboro, yeah. both of, you know, all of us to reach our, our final goal. Mm -hmm. So question, with all of the art, <laughs> you know, Salvador, if, if what would you say is the one thing you can't miss, the one thing you must do? Well, I would definitely encourage folks to go see the murals um, by William Hernandez and Abdiel Flores Ubaldo on Calle Diaz um, that were part of the Going Public Partnership. Um, I also, you know, it, speaking of um, the temporary artwork that was in Arenco Park, yeah. I remember going there about four years ago with friends out of town 
specifically wanting to be there. And we did a whole photo shoot there. Um, and I think that's that those kinds of opportunities, whether they're temporary or permanent, are really valuable because they become a destination place for folks. Um, and so I'm looking forward to what's the next uh, work that's going to come up in the city of Hillsborough and uh, visit. So mm -hmm. nice. And and again, that was in a Renko Nature Woods Park, which is slightly outside of our cultural arts district, but it just shows how much you know art is infused throughout the city. Yeah. So thank you for bringing thank you for bringing that piece in, yeah. Razier. Well, I like to do a couple of things when I come to the Cultural Arts District to consume art. Mm -hmm. um, I do double duty. I enjoy going to Bag and Baggage Theater, the edgy works that they're doing, their improv. But before I go to the theater, I go get my copy at Insomnia. So making sure that I can be fully engaged in what I get to experience there at the theater. Nice. And Insomnia, mm -hmm. they, uh, they present local art. Yes. So there, and they rotate it. Uh -huh. So, yes. um, and that's one of the things to go in. It's great coffee, but also great art yeah. that you can that you can see as well as purchase from local local artists. All right, Bridie. I have to one thing. push back on the question <laughs> a little bit because there's so many um, so many exciting things happening in, in our cultural arts district, and I'm so glad that you included restaurants because our culinary um, businesses are absolutely a driving force of creativity. Go, I really encourage people to go support your local theaters, support your local performing art spaces, spend money in, in galleries. Um, we've talked about La Strada and El Sol. I also want to highlight with all this new creativity happening that Hillsborough's Art Walk is 16 years old. It's happening every first Tuesday of every month. It was there last night. Um, it's just incredible to see um, businesses and artists and Influence Music Hall booking all these great musicians coming together. The Walters Cultural Arts Center has a robust schedule of performance programming, arts education programming. I, I'm going to cut myself off because there's, there's really no end. <laughs> so how do we then, with all that is happening, how do we keep track of it? How do we know um, what all there is to do and where do I go so I know how to plan my schedule and my calendar? Sure. Well, the city's website has great calendars for parks and recreation, a lot of the great community events happening. Um, the, uh, you know, the Cultural Arts District actually links directly to um, the Tualta Valley Creates calendar because that's a calendar where artists can directly submit their information. So you can link to city events um, from our libraries, from our Cultural Arts Division, from, um, from Parks and Rec and, and community festivals, but also events happening throughout the region. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a very powerful tool and we're really grateful to Tualta Valley Creates for making that happen. Um, there's great articles on behind the scenes things happening too, but, uh, but Razi can tell you more about the calendar. Yeah, so we relaunched um, our organization and launched the online calendar in early 2019. And the online calendar is free to access. There's over 120 things going on every month. And so that includes Hillsborough, the core of Hillsborough, as well as the greater Washington County region. And then um, through our social media, you can find a lot of information. And then events from the calendar get emailed out on Tuesday morning. So that's a great way to stay informed, to plan out your week with your family and friends. Thank you. Nice. Um, similar spaces as both of you have mentioned, RAC has a cultural calendar as well as opportunities for artists that are mm -hmm. happening in the region. Um, and we share that both on our website as well as our social media um, presence. Um, yeah. Great. So as you look for things to do or if you are somebody who wants to enter into you know, the, the artist world, you can look at any of these websites and again, social media, Facebook, all of that to find those connections and to find those opportunities and to find ways to enrich your soul and just to lift your spirits as you have done with us today. So thank you all for joining us and thank you for joining us. And remember, wherever you live, support your local artists experience them, clap for them, tip them, buy from them. And um, because in doing so, you will return more and more art into your life and into our communities. And we will make a more wonderful place for all of us to live with each other. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day.